Welcome to our digital worship for Sunday, January 23rd. Thank you for joining us together as we come together to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin our worship, I ask you to join with me as we come together for confession and forgiveness. We're gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear and understand. This was the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was standing above the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Lifting up their hands, they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. 
Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those who, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its seat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their er errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Paul writes, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving greater honor to the inferior members, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongue. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. And I will show you a still more excellent way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel 
according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, you have made us a part of something that is bigger than ourselves. You have made us and included us in baptism into your life here on earth. You've made us into the body of Christ. Help us to learn how to live in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So years ago, um, when I was in college, one of the, the traditions, the many traditions that A&M had was the bonfire. And again, it's a tradition that ended because of an unfortunate accident. But one of the things that would go on in that fall as you were leading up in the months to the the game against the University of Texas is there would be this massive effort of going out and cutting down trees and then you had to carry them from where they were cut to the truck which would be take them back to the campus and then you would have to unload them from the truck and take them up to where they would be all leaned up together um, to form this massive bonfire you know it would be the, the trees on the outside would be bigger around than, than what my hands can get around. And if you've never had the, uh, I don't know if it's a privilege, but the challenge of picking up a tree that's fallen, you'd be amazed how heavy they are. 
you know, even just picking up, you know, an individual piece from a fallen tree, you know, you can only pick up so much at one time because wood, especially, especially wood when it's not dry, it's heavy. And so you would have to come together and you'd have one person put one arm under on one side and one person put their other arm on the other side and you basically are person to person able to kind of shuffle along and you have to kind of call out, you know, okay, left, right, left, right, left, right on, on each side. And so you kind of move slowly because it takes all of you together to bear the weight of this, this massive fallen tree. And even though it's not real pleasant, it is a definitely a bonding experience. I think that's one of the reasons that the, the seals still use um, telephone poles as a part of their, their training. It's not pleasant. But you have to work together because if you, if you don't, you know, one person, the strongest person, can't do it on their own. The strongest person relies on the weakest person. And everybody has to work together to make this thing go from where it wants to be, where it is now on the ground, to where it's going to be. You know, and it's not nice and easy and perfect. And yet, that's the way that the process goes. Let me use another image. Um, so there's lots of different types of art. So there is one that's called photorealism, which is basically where you try to take, and as much as possible, you make it look like if you were taking a photograph. Now, the reality is when we take a photograph of something, it's an incredibly crisp, clear picture of what that actually looks like. And, to, and it takes a lot of skill to be able to replicate that with pencil or paint or even on digital art. It can be done, but it's a, a slow process. But much of art is not like that. Much of art allows the mind to see things in a different way. So you have all the different the pieces that, that come together and flow and you have the sense of movement. And while both pictures are beautiful, they communicate different things. When we are born, we are all basically given a lot of the same tools with our mind. Our mind continues to grow and evolve as we grow and evolve. And as we learn, our mind rewires itself. And it's not just that a person who is a, a football, professional football player has different physical gifts than I do that may be genetic. It's the reality that their mind and their body has, has programmed itself to be able to do certain things really fast, really well, without thinking about it. And just as they probably couldn't do my job very easily, I certainly can't do theirs. Not without, not without one being a lot younger, but not without a lot of training, both physical and mental, to be able to do what they do. You know, Paul uses the image of the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ and individually we're members of it. And he's talking to a, a, a congregation that is fractured. You know, they've taken these gifts that the Holy Spirit has given them and they've tried to say, well, I've got a better gift than you, or you're somehow less than me. And for me, I understand exactly where Paul is coming from on this argument, and yet I also, when I'm honest, 
I understand the Corinthians too. You know, there is a part of me that understands that I am gifted in certain ways. And yet, I can also be critical of the places where I'm not gifted. And try to, to fill in all those gaps. And try and do it all on my own. You know, I've said before, one of my weaknesses is asking for help. I do it, but it's hard for me. Because again, that was not the way I was brought up. I sometimes believe I have to do like Atlas and carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I was never meant to do that. Nobody was. I remember uh, one time when I was out training with the Army. I'd probably been up for two, three, four days at this point and just trying to keep going, trying to make everything work. And... Um, Sergeant Major McGarry, who was there, and um, you know, this is a guy who had 30 years, 30 years in the army at this point. You know, kind of a uh, Irish background from from the Bronx. Uh, you know, chewed a cigar. He didn't smoke him anymore, but he continued to to have a cigar in his mouth, even though he wasn't smoking it. Just one of those. If you were to to craft what a a crusty old sergeant major would look like, he would fit the part. And he comes up to me and, again, although technically I outranked him, you know, I was either a senior lieutenant or a young captain at this point, a, a young officer who doesn't listen to a sergeant major is, is, is a fool. So he comes up to me and he says, Sir, you know what the problem with you officers is? You know, and we in the Army, we do this to you. We tell you you are so important that you can't drive for yourself, so we assign you a driver as soon as you're a fresh lieutenant. And then, you know, you become a company commander. We give you a first sergeant. We give you an XO. We give you the, the power to, to make decisions of punishment. You are judge, jury, executioner, and then you become a battalion commander, and then we give you a, a whole staff, and you become a regimental commander. You have an even larger staff, and you have, in addition to a driver, you have a security guard. You have all these different functionaries. You become a general, and you, you have an aide de camp. You have a young officer who has to follow you around and take notes for you and do everything you, he, that you, are, you tell him to do, and so we put you up in this pedestal higher and higher and higher, and you begin to think that you're immune to the things that the rest of us have to deal with. You begin to think you can do it all. Now that was his, uh, that was his way of saying, sir, go to sleep. We will be just fine without you. We will manage just fine without whatever you have to contribute in your sleep deprived state. Again, as a young person, I believe that you know, I can keep going. It doesn't matter. I have a lot of gifts that God has given me. And so do you. And they're different. They're as different as eyes and ears and noses, as hands and feet. Some gifts we may not recognize as well. Some gifts may just be so apparent that, hey, we just take them for granted. Some gifts we may be clothed with more honor because, not because they're the best, but because the person who wields them is the most fragile. You know, yes, we need people who can can speak the truth. We need people who can interpret scripture. We need people who can teach. We need people who can be healers. We need people who can do all the different things that make the church what it is. We need people who are willing to give and willing to serve. We need all of these things and no one person can do it all. You know, the only person as an individual who can be the body of Christ is Jesus Christ.
And I'm not him. Nor are any of us. It's only together that we can be the body of Christ. It's only together that we can come together, hear Scripture, understand what God is doing in the world, and be a part of that. You know, God comes down to be among us in Christ and comes to where we are. And in Nazareth, you know, he gathers together the people around him and he he reads scripture and he interprets it to them. But now that's something that takes all of us together. Because by the Spirit, it's with all of us together that Christ is present. And none of us are strong enough to do that on our own. We need one another. And I know that sometimes church is an unwieldy thing, but we still need one another. I know that sometimes it's, it's uncomfortable being your role within the body of Christ, but we still need each other. And so whatever your role is, may we continue to lift up and build up one another. May we continue to, together, see one another for who we are as parts, members of the body of Christ, and we can't just cut one off because they're inconvenient or because we may not care for that part. We need one another. For together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Thanks be to God. Amen. I ask you to join with me as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we lift up this world that you love. Renew your creation and give wisdom to all your people who share in your responsibility to care for the world. Give wisdom to the leaders of nations, states, and cities to care for your people in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Protect and bless all who sacrifice to guard our freedoms, including Ben, Bryson, Christian, Clayton, Daniel, Dylan, Hayden, Luke, Michael, Spencer, Sidney, Tyler B., and Tyler G. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We lift up before you Aaron, Aubrey, Avery, Austin, Betsy, Bob D., Bob S., Brenda, Krista, Craig, Dan, Dave, Deanne, Dennis, Dorothy, Eliza, Elizabeth, Francis, Jamie, Jan, Jerry K., Jerry N., Jonathan, Kathy, Kay, Linda, Michaela, Matt, Maureen, Michelle, Mick, Mike, Nancy, Patrick, Pete, Roger, Sandy, Scott, Shay, Sharon, Susan, Tom, and Vim. And those who we pray for in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the ministries of the ELCA and the Northern Texas, Northern Louisiana Synod. We also lift up in prayer today our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Grand Prairie, Umoja International Mission Lutheran Church, Fort Worth, and First Call Theological Accompaniment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now in trust and in hope we commend you, O Lord, all for whom we pray. Amen. 
So just a couple real quick announcements. So if uh, we at uh, Rejoice are, are going to be partnering with Quick MD Care, um, they will be doing a testing site here at Rejoice. It's starting this week. So if if you have need for a COVID test and you are close to the church, that is an option for you. So you can uh, line, you can log in at uh, quickmdcare.com and sign up, and or you can show up, uh, and they will do a test for you here. Um, again, we have continued. We're continuing to adjust. So new members class has been postponed. Um, more information will be coming on that. Um, we just served at, at Samaritan Inn last Friday, and we'll have the opportunity to do that again coming up in March. So if you're interested in that, please uh, please let, uh, you can either let me or you can let uh, Marilyn Nelson know. All right. That at this point is the announcements that I have for this week. So may God's peace be with you as you gather together in your homes and with your families. Um, this is also the part of the service where we would collect our offering. So again, I want to thank you for continuing to support Rejoice, allowing us to do what we do. Um, You've made this possible. You've made it possible for us to, to do what we do, to adapt, to, to do the digital and the in-person worship. So thank you. Thank you for allowing us to do what we do and, and continuing to allow us to make this possible. Um, if you want to support Rejoice, you can always do that either through uh, offering digitally, um, either through the Tithely app or through the Give Now button on the website, or through sending a check to our physical address at 12,000 Independence Parkway, Frisco, Texas, 75035. At this point, we will prepare for communion. Um, communion is a central part of our worship here at Rejoice. It's a place where we trust Christ meets us. And so I invite you to gather together uh, bread and wine in your home as we prepare to celebrate. We gather together and we remember how in the night in which he is betrayed, how our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. May Christ be present with you as you celebrate together in your homes.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your death and resurrection. May these gifts of your body and blood create in us the fruits of your redemption and grace in our lives. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. As God has claimed us as his own in Christ, we seek to follow Christ through these marks of disciple life. Praying daily, worshiping weekly, studying the Bible, serving others, building spiritual friendships, giving to God and our neighbors in need, engaging God's mission. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.